direct from the source. And let me just say this while while we're here, <laughs> while we're here. Oh, wow. I do not profess to know it all. I don't profess to not be wrong. There are instances that I'm wrong. Man. It doesn't happen often because I usually fact check before I come here and I talk my shit. So, you know, I remember when, you know, in the beginning, you all tried to get me together about when I said in the in the, in the video. A, hom a homonym. A homonym. A hom right. A homophone, a homograph. Correct. So see down here at the bottom, it says homonyms can be referred to as both homophone and homograph. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So the same is true here. Some woman, this was talking about the puffy situation where she says in the comments, she says, educate yourself. This ain't only about sex trafficking. This is about Puffy. This is about uh, De Leon tequila and the people who own it. The rest of that stuff is a distraction for the real reason. It's a lot of things at play. In other words, she was trying to say that the only reason that they're bringing these charges because he was going to buy NBC. Because he, right. They said that about Bill Cosby. So then I said in the comments, I said, girl, just stop. You sound crazy. I actually interviewed Malcolm Jamal Warner's mom. Her name is Pam on my podcast and she said Bill Cosby was never planning to buy NBC. It's an urban myth slash rumor. And here you are spreading misinformation. What's sad is y'all care more about protecting these men simply because they're rich and black and you don't give a damn about protecting black women and black girls as much as some of y'all scream and chant that. But how many of us truly believe in protecting black women? I know I do. So again, I am sometimes wrong, but you know, you really could just go straight on over to Google. And there was another uh, screenshot in here. Where's the screenshot about the, um, no, not that. It was the one where, um, when I talked about Dave the Slave. Is that in here? Um, you can just pull it up when you find it. Um, oh yeah, there it is. So when we talked about Dave the Slave the other week, remember I told you guys about the, um, the potter, he was a slave. Oh, yeah. Right. So she comes in under the video and says, wrong, Craig. The name was Dave the Potter from Edgefield, South Carolina. Dave the Potter's family are not poor. Henrietta Lacks' family won a multi-million dollar settlement for herself. So then I said to her, there's always someone in the comments invested in proving me wrong. Today, it's you. Sugar, you could have simply Googled Dave the slave instead of playing yourself in these comments. So then I went on to say, Here's what they say in Google. I copied and pasted it. Dave, D David, Dave the Potter, Drake, South Carolina, also known as Dave the Slave. Like, I don't understand why some of you just don't go to Google instead of typing this foolishness in these comments. Some people just like arguing. <laughs> right. What do they say in the comments, Craig? <laughs> what do they say down there in the comments? Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Just loud and wrong. Girl, <laughs> so you like to go and let the girls get you, and then you pull the girls together. Because, again, even when we're live here, like somebody um, corrected me earlier when I misspoke and said, remember I said that there are nine Supreme Court justices, yes. and I misspoke and said Trump appointed six. I meant three, and somebody corrected me. And I said, yes, that's what I meant to say. I don't mind being wrong, but it's just like when they come in, in these comments, and be saying, I'm like, girl, you better just went to Google and look that up instead of trying to prove me wrong and instead sound like a hater. Loud and wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, Craig, is this the way you treat your fans? <laughs> Madison, I don't have fans. Those people are your fans. I don't have fans. Uh, Those are your pen pals. I have pen pals. Is this the way you treat your pen pals? Well, the pen pals don't do all of that. Well, obviously, there are some pen pals. No, some of these people are yours, and they don't like me. And a lot of them are yours, and they don't like me either. Then it's okay. <laughs> but we all coexist. Yes, we do. And my thing is, sometimes, girl, mm -hmm. like, when you be tearing them up, I'm like, Craig, you don't love them like you should? Who am I tearing up? Girl, you supposed to love the pen pals. I do love the pen pals. The pen pals know I love them. But you came over there trying to check that girl. and she Check who? But she, checked, she wasn't no pen pal. She checked you, and you was like, girl, check out. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Google and check out. Right. Speaking all confidently wrong. You know, those comments live. They live there. People can go and see how ignorant you really were. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have simply gone to Google.com. Oh, kind of the way we found out that I was engaged. Correct. I woke up to find that. <laughs> I was like, wow. Girl, when I saw that come across here, I said, what? I shook G. I said, G, did you know? 
<laughs> so he didn't even know he he didn't even know he proposed. Yeah, I said, Gee, did you know? I said, oh, okay. That's a mess. That man didn't even know he proposed. Listen, I said, well, you need to call home and tell him that the news done broke. <laughs> call home. Tell him the news done broke. Why? And I didn't, I'm not the one that broke it. I wonder how, yeah. I think about that. Like any blowback, maybe. I don't know, G. I'm Merlo, because it's, uh, it, I need 30 seconds, please. <laughs> please give you. me 30 seconds. I got you. Hold on. We are right here. Please. Run up. gentlemen oh yes i'm throwing a big bewitched birthday bash for all my ghouls goblins giblets and good pussy bitches out there honey that want to get dressed and get down on the dance floor on halloween please make sure you get your tickets by visiting www.eventbrite.com honey because we're gonna have a hell of a time on halloween child Baby, I'm turning 47, and I am going to heaven, and I'm going as a goo. <laughs> Listen, come on out to the party, baby, and have a good time with us. Remember, don't meet me there, bitch. Beat me there. Get your tickets at www.eventbrite.com. <laughs> Don't forget, November 8th, we're going to be live in Baltimore, Maryland. Those tickets are on sale. They're about a quarter of the way sold out. I do believe that this show is going to sell out just like the first one did, so please do not wait. Uh, November 19th, we're going to be in Chicago, but those tickets will be on sale this week, so stand by for those. Just make sure that you're subscribed to fagtalk.com for your tickets. All right? Uh, wait a minute now. So I'm just waiting this. Is. R. Kelly's daughter shares heartbreaking allegations about her dad in new docu that one millisecond changed my life. Oh, wow. They still tearing him up? They should. That's why I don't get how people are, su are supporting or trying to say that Diddy uh, saying that they just going after a black man when this dude just has done wrong throughout his whole career. Mm. That ex-wife of his, Drea, Drea Kelly, <clears throat> she's something else. What you think about her? I like her. Do you? Mm -hmm. She's I, a little extra to me. I don't I want like her to her. sit down. I, I like her. I asked her those pertinent questions. I asked really? her that when, when she came on, turned out with T.S. Madison. You know, mm -hmm. she came. And I asked her questions about these things, you know. But here's the thing. I watched a video where I, where I saw R. Kelly singing um live and they were saying that these vocals are uh his vocals were unmatched and da 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 mm -hmm. and he was just singing and how do it's unbelievable you know uh -huh. Hang God is calling me he was he was just singing and singing and singing mm -hmm. and, and I was standing there all those women mm -hmm. were the women they were they were singing to but the women were so I hear you calling here you I come, come baby, baby. See you, and they were all just they were mesmerized. Yes, well, you know he is it's the like Pied Piper. He's the Pied Piper. Yeah, but my thing is, where do where, where do your own values kind of kick in? You understand what I'm saying? Like, for example, like if there if there was something going on with little black boys, and it was some singer that I loved who was taking advantage of them and doing whatever for me. I wouldn't be able to still support that. There were people who were still going to see his concerts. 
standing outside his shows, protesting in his behind on his behind. And one of those people got got, and I saw it in the docu series that she was out there talking. about She was at the court, the yeah. little young girl, and then she got pulled, and then she got pulled, pulled together. But don't y'all don't y'all y'all believe in in uh in spells, don't y'all? I, again, he's a siren. That's what I was about to say. So, don't you think his music just captivates people so much? He he was he also was a siren. And so, for all you black people that are so hooked on R. Kelly, and you don't understand these MAGA Trump supporters, it's the same thing. <laughs> Y'all just as mesmerized as them fools are. Mm. It's the same thing. Mm. Caught in the trance. Kind of like no wrong. Kind of like those people that that worship Boosie. We got that little clip that I sent you, Mo. Mm -hmm. Those Bo Them because Boosie people. There's some Boosie worshippers out there too that I just see like my God unto us. We can in in any order it'll go. Yeah. I can start with what he said. Then. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So when your daughter came out, she still can't bring her situation to our house. Well, why? She's wrong. Because I don't want it to contaminate her other six, seven sisters. I never said you was a bad father because you're not. Boosie, you are a failure for referring to your child as a contamination. I'm enraged for your daughter because I know the dance that she's performing all too well. So many queer folks with hateful parents know exactly that delicate dance she's performing of not too much on my dad, right? Because I love him. I was raised and taught that I have to love him or at the very least respect him. And so an onslaught of hate in his direction hurts me. It pains me. But also understanding that first I got to G-check you because you got to respect me too, right? And you are not considering the hate that comes my way as a result of your hateful comments. And so I respect your daughter Ivy for saying, I will no longer allow you to paint me with your homophobic brush. No, I get to speak up and say who I am. And I'm going to be honest with you in a way that opens me up to vulnerabilities, but okay, we ball. There is something particularly sinful about having a parent who convinces themselves and you that they can and juggle both love and hate at the same time about allowing you to get so close to understanding what full love feels like being a part of a real whole family contingent upon you being closeted in their presence and the emptiness you're left with after you refuse to pretend sometimes i feel like as queer people it's easier to have parents committed to hating us out loud than pretending to love us in private it's not letting you play, it's not letting you play. okay wow craig let's dissect that while you uh he yes, so, yes, sinful. It is very sinful. Yes, yes, for your parent to do that to you. Yes, that's Herbie. I love Herbie. Is that who was in this video? Mm -hmm. Where the other phone? They say, bo bo yes, boosted traumatized from that experience, honey. He can't look at a Coke can the same. No, anytime he see a Coke can somewhere, he just get a flashback. You know, you said that Coke, they put the Coke can down and let it be known that somebody's in there getting fucked. <laughs> so anytime he see a Coke, matter of fact, can we play Diet Coke commercials just for Boosie? <laughs> 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 Bitch. So before I play a snippet of what Boosie's daughter said, it's really sad to me that there are parents who could really, really just tear their child up like that publicly. And even even, even if it's not just publicly in the way that Boosie did, if you do it in your family, if you do it in your family, and then you have the family turning against your child because of your homophobia. I remember many years ago when I first, first... Um, did a book tour. I did I did uh, this bookstore in Philly. And it was this young gay boy that happened. He just happened to come into the bookstore this particular day. And this particular bookstore, they offered um, free condoms. You know, a lot of these gay bookstores, they'll have like free condoms sometimes and free lube for people, I guess, who can't afford it. And so he came in just to get like some free condoms. Who? This was in, I was doing a book signing in Philly. And who came in? And it was this young goat boy that came in. Uh -huh. Young guy came in. I didn't know him. And he didn't know I was there. He didn't know me. And he just came in just to get these um, these condoms. And I happened to be reading. And he stayed. And he ended up coming up to me at the end and said to me, he was a college student. So somebody said, well, who can't afford lube? He was a college student. And um, he came in to get the condoms and the lube. And so we ended up talking. He told me he was, he was West Indian. I don't remember what country. But he was West Indian. 
And he said when his mom found out he was gay, she stopped paying for his tuition and she put him out the house. But then she took it a step further. She called her siblings, which were his aunts, and told them also that he was gay and not to help him. So this young boy was living in a park. And this older guy, older gay guy, took him in. But this is where that Angelica Ross thing came up. Well, we talked about this in Nashville. We didn't talk about it here. But this is where Angelica Ross's post came comes in, where she talks about how there are so many older gays that prey on young boys, vulnerable young boys. And this man invited him into his house, but it was it was in exchange for sex. Right. And so this young boy was coming into the bookstore to get condoms. And I remember saying to him, so what happens if this man tells you he's no longer using condoms? What, what what happens? You know, so I ended up connecting this young boy with the bookstore owner so that they could hopefully connect him to some services and maybe he could, you know, find another place to stay or whatever because ain't nothing for free. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're st I mean, it would be one thing if that man had taken him in as a good Samaritan, but it obviously was it was for something else. But that was really unfortunate. And so I think I think that it's really when we when I think about young queer people coming into this community without the support of their family, it really does make a difference in how they navigate this community. I think a lot of times when, when kids come into this community and they end up on drugs, and I'm not saying that this is across the board, so don't send me no crazy messages. What I'm saying is, oftentimes when, when young queer people come into this community, I don't care if you're talking about trans people, gay people, lesbians, when you come into this community, because this is a, this community, it is definitely a, a character builder. It can either make you or break you. And I just believe that if you don't have the foundation from your... So this is for all of the parents who may be struggling with their child's sexual identity or sexual orientation. I want you to really pay attention to what I'm saying to you because oftentimes when they come into this community and, and your support is wavering or it's not there at all, they search for validation from other people in this community. And it's not always gonna be people who are going to have their best interests at hand. And so a lot of times, and I haven't done any studies on it, I'm just telling you from my experience of being in this community, oftentimes when people come into this community and they don't have the support of their family, oftentimes they they find themselves on the dark side of the community. And you can just take that wherever you want to. I ended up being a prostitute. And I thought about that, and I was gonna ask you one time, but I remember one time we were here and your mom was already a little upset yeah. about the thought mm -hmm. of the stuff that you got into because of, of your relationship. And I didn't want to ask this because I didn't want her to feel bad. Uh -huh. But I thought about that. And I was going to say to you one day, do you think you would have even gone into porn had your mom been like, you know what? Don't worry about it. You're welcome here. Da, da, da. I think your trajectory would have been completely different. I don't know. And you know why I say I don't know? Because mm -hmm. um, even if that would have uh, been the case... Society. It was society. I had to work. You had to go to work, right? There was work, and like Craig, this is thirty years ago. We're talking about right, like right. I'm forty seven in right. a few in a few days, right, right, actually. Right, right. And so this is like this is uh, this is thirty years ago. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so things were different. So it was a it was it was survival sex for me. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. like like how I, I I wanted boobs. I wanted yeah. I wanted to be the the cunt. I wanted to be you know the things. I also needed to have a roof over my head. I, Right. I wanted to be independent. I didn't want to live in the house of my mother. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to be with my mm -hmm. mothers and brother. I didn't want to do that. I right. wanted to be independent and also have my own life. I also wanted to go to school. Mm -hmm. There were so many mm -hmm. things that I wanted to do. The same things that most young people want. Yeah, you know, right. young people are all over the place. They want to do everything and they want it now. Yes, and, and it's because of this, like, you know, but you need money to do this. Yeah, right. yeah. And my mother's working two two jobs, three jobs. Mm -hmm. So what could she that what could she do for a yeah. grown a, a grown yeah. trans person? Right. I'm transitioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when the girls be reading to my, oh, you went and got, you laid down on the, on the table and got, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. That's what was mm -hmm. available for me mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. That was available for me at the time in my, in the, in the, in the, in the bracket, in the financial bracket that I was in. Oh, that's what, that's what I, that's, those were the things that were available for me now. Yeah. And a lot of us have lost our lives. And this is why it pisses me off a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Well, it don't really piss me off, but I just be like, 
I'm very harsh with them. Girl, you won't make it to be my age. Yeah. Because if you really had to walk in the shoes that I walked in, you wouldn't survive. Because this now, oh, uh, uh, how everything is offended, you offended by everything, yeah. bitch, you wouldn't survive. Yeah. You wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to make it. Yeah. So you got to thank girls like me and all the other girls who who lived through that type of stuff and and, and were able to make it out of that. Right. And and to see brighter days of y'all going, y'all getting pussies and shit on from the government. Mm -hmm. Y'all getting titties done. It's part of healthcare now. It's part of healthcare. That bitch, we were. Are you fucking crazy? You're right. We have it. And and because of that, and to that point, I never thought about this, but to that point. It removes the need for girls to be in dark alleys or apartments or hotels getting pumped because a lot of this stuff, especially when it comes to um, HRT, yeah, they can get that stuff through. Um, you, we, you don't have to go. Like I get right. my hormones now from my doctor. Right. Thank the Lord that how, how times have changed. Yeah, right. I go to my doctor when I go get my my doctor test my 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 testosterone levels and my my estrogen levels. Mm -hmm. My doctor and and. My doctor prescribes me the things for, right. for my transition. Right. I was like, "Wow, look how life, look how life, life, has, life changed. has changed." Yeah. So when the, when them young bitches be saying that little fuck shit towards me, you know, I'm like, "Bro, you ain't hurting me by call." L mm -hmm. Listen, I'm a bitch. I'm a champion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm here today to see times change for you. Right. 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 So yes, I did lay on the table and get those motherfucking uh, uh, what you call it, and, and 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 when it was done, at the time it motherfucking was done, it they were, it was all beautiful. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Bitch, it was beautiful. It was molded together. Bitch, the shit still the shit still to take. I've just gained weight on top of it. Mm -hmm. But bitch, you know. So this is what was. These were the things that were. Uh, I, I these were what was afforded to me at, at that the time. time. Yeah. You yeah. know. But I just really want to remind parents who are struggling this ain't about you get your ego out of it one of the things that i said to my mom when i when i came out to her was my listen you worried about what your sisters are gonna think my aunts you're worried about your friends what they gonna think i said girl i already thought about that i've already I've, i'm past that i need you to now catch up and i'm gonna give you the space to do that but it's your ego parents you know what i'm saying because again when you think about when I think about the trajectory that some of these kids, and when I say kids, I'm talking about when I was 22. When I was 22, th there are a lot of kids that are not still alive when I came through. You understand? Because they fell into these horrible relationships because they didn't get love from you. Mm -hmm. Because you kicked them out of the house. Because you told them it was wrong. You beat their self-esteem out of them. And they found themselves on drugs. In some of this, some of this deviant behavior, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I really do believe that some of it is attached to self-esteem. Some, some of these people are out here fucking because their self-esteem is attached to sex. It's the dopamine that they correct give them, that gives them the thing. To so, honey, some of you just need a hug. You don't need sex. You need a hug. Could it be the person that was holding that light pole? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are still in him to this day. Oh. To this day. Oh. To this day, the kids are still in that man on the pole. <laughs> but get them out now. No, I don't think that's happening. No. No, I don't think that's Get happening. them children out of here. Yeah. Girl, I rolled past the bathhouse the other day, girl. That parking lot was you full. Can only, you it's can kinda, only... It's kind of like how this silicone to me, the, the cells is attached to the cells. Okay. <laughs> The, those kids are attached to the anal cells. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's attached to the cells. That's <laughs> where it's at, honey. Okay. <laughs> Girl, that parking lot of that bathhouse was full, bitch. In the daytime. In the middle of the afternoon. At least they was in that bathing. Girl, you think that's Before what they were after. after? Girl, it's called a bathhouse, but I don't think anybody's in there bathing. No, they were bathing. In children. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> So that Craig, place never, stays in business. You've never had the bathhouse experience. No, I haven't. I never. I haven't either. Mm -mm. And I'm not saying that I'm better. I am, but <laughs> you are saying you're better. <laughs> but um, and I'm not judging anybody who does that. You are. <laughs> you are. I mean, I did the internet thing. What? I write about it in my first book. So listen, it's already there. But my point is, and, and I'm a big believer of this. Once you are, once you get to the root. Of why you do whatever it is that you do, just like you had that revelation, you got to the point like 
I don't want to do sex work anymore. Yeah. Once you get to the point and in, in the and in, to the root of why you are doing the things that you do, whether it's bathhouses, whether it's uh, the internet hooking up, whether it's in the park, whatever it is that whatever your vice is, once you get to the root mm -hmm. of why you're doing it, you can heal it. Yes, you can. And once you heal it and you're honest with yourself, you can no longer pretend to be ignorant about why you were doing it in the first place.